Hey everybody, Josh back here with StartedRainGutterBusiness.com. Today we're going to kind of go through some tips and tricks on how to use the rain gutter machine itself. We've already done a video on trailer setup, so we'll kind of skip over a lot of that stuff, but uh, we're going to do kind of some tips and tricks that we use to keep everything rolling smoothly. So we'll start with the extension cord. Uh, one thing that I hate is dinking around with an extension cord for half the day trying to get the thing untangled and anyways um, we use a technique called the daisy chain and basically it's just a series of slip knots and <clears throat> this allows you to you just pull on the one end and it undoes itself and you don't have to go all the way if you don't want to um, say your power is pretty close uh, you could just go you know 10 20 feet off of it and then when you're done you just grab a loop and it's basically just a bunch of slip knots. So you're, you're slip knotting that through every time and it rarely gets tangled and it works really well to keep production flowing smooth first thing, first thing at the job. So just wanted to show you that. Okay, so we'll step back to the machine here. <clears throat> I use KWM machines and I've tried a few different brands and these are rock solid machines. They're my favorite that I've tried. Um, I've had three different brands. I don't want to go naming names, but KWM is, they set them up really well for you. <clears throat> if you order them new, they ask you what material width you're using, what thickness of material you're using, and they set them up just perfectly. And they, I've never had a problem getting them straight from the factory. And they run material out perfect day one. And they continue to do that for years. So. I've had really good luck with them and I'm gonna keep using them for a while here. So this particular machine is, I think it's probably three years old now. Um, it's a five, six combo K style machine. And I use it mainly for six inch and don't swap it over very often just because of the time it takes. It's probably a half hour process to go back and forth, but um, I have enough five inch machines to just keep those rolling. So if I only had to buy one machine right now, it would be this machine. It's a five, six combo K style. Um, that would allow you to go back and forth between five inch, six inch. Uh, I know a lot of parts of the country use strictly six inch, but um, especially in the Northwest states, I would just get a five, six combo. That way you could have the option to do both, make a little bit more money with six inch. So another thing I wanted to bring up was, is using a coil cradle. Um, it's a little cheaper alternative to the spools and it saves you a little bit of room in the back of the trailer. The coil cradles are so big and bulky and they take quite a bit of time to put everything together every, uh, depending on how big, big a coils you get. But we order coils per job or per couple jobs. And so we just get individual coils that are easily liftable by your hand. You set it on the coil cradle and it feeds right in. Uh, sit, just kind of cleans up the whole top of the machine, gives you a little space to put everything, a little more space, rather than having a big spool rack up here. And you don't have to deal with having a forklift or, uh, you know, some sort of machinery to get a spool with a full coil on your machine. So we switch colors a lot, so that's the primary reason for that. It makes it really quick to just throw another coil on when you get to the next job, and uh, they work really well, and it's a little cheaper option. One thing about the coil cradle is these, especially these, these are the mini coil cradle and they don't have a coil break on them, which can cause problems. And so I just use a chunk of cardboard shoved in between the frame and the roller and it slows the roller right down, works fine. You just throw a new chunk of cardboard in every once in a while and pretty simple solution. One question we get asked a lot about the guillotines on these is, I know it says oil blade daily on here, and uh, you can kind of feel when it's starting to need oil. You don't necessarily have to oil it every day. It seems a little excessive to me. That oil gets on the ends of your gutters and can uh, ruin your glue jobs or make an oil path through your glue and make an end cap leak. So we probably don't oil them every day. It's probably more uh, twice a week type thing. So, and that's every, you know, uh, 500 feet, something like that, 500 to 1,000 feet of gutter coil, depending on, you know, lengths of your runs and all that. But anyways, uh, one thing that you can look at to tell if it's 
needs oiled is a lot of times it'll start kind of crushing the, and bending the top edge of the gutter. So you'll, you'll see a little kink in there or it'll start kind of giving it a little dent. So if you see any of those signs, just go ahead and throw some oil on. Uh, another question I get asked a lot is <clears throat> these back, this back switch panel. Um, this has an emergency stop and lock switch. So when that's locked, it won't let you do anything up front. And a lot of times when you're loading down spout boxes or whatever in here, it'll pop that switch in and you have to twist it out to get everything to work again. So if you're having problems with it when you first get it and you're trying to figure it out, it's possibly this switch. You just have to twist it and pop it out so you can see the yellow line in there. And then another thing is this jog button back here will not work if that front switch need, uh, is not on jog and forward. So you have to set the front to jog and forward in order for this back feed switch to work. Another nice thing about just having the coil cradle is um, switching between five and six inch Brake, oil blade, gutter coil, coil okay. which is uh, <clears throat> 11 and seven eighths or 15 inch coil is these side rollers. They just have a pin that you can just use, pull out, swap in. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to cover was to make sure when you're before you travel to your next job or head back to the shop, make sure you're emptying the coil out of the machine. What happens is, you know, little bits of metal or whatever can work its way down into the machine. And if that gutter coil is there to catch those, then it runs out with your when you empty the machine for the next job. So if you just run that out, these are designed to run down the road without coil in them, which is one nice feature of these newer machines. Uh, it saves you a lot of headache and keeps your rollers cleaner and can keep you from bending stuff inside and uh, running zip screws through or whatever. So just to kind of wrap everything up, these KWM machines are pretty rock solid. Um, we really enjoy using them and I think you guys will be happy with them too. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, just make sure and like it if you like this video. Comment below and we'll get back to you and subscribe to our channel. And I think you guys will be happy with them too. And, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, I was